Hey guys, it's been a while. Dave here. Welcome back to the channel. Back in the UK, Sunday, it's actually stopped raining, believe it or not. So I'm gonna head out, do a three hour ride. Thought it would be a good opportunity, shoot a vlog, have a bit of a catch up, let you know what I've been up to, what I've got coming up, and what you guys can expect from this channel. Today, I'm heading out with my S-Works Tarmac SL8 with the new SRAM Red Axis group set. I've had the opportunity to ride a bit over the last couple of weeks, and at the end of the video, I'm gonna let you know what I think and how it compares to my Durious DI2. With all that being said, it is forecast to rain this afternoon. We better waste no time. Let's hit the road. So with my box fresh white socks on, off I headed to do a dry and hopefully sunny three hours on the bike. UK summertime, gotta love it. Weather forecast said no rain till four o'clock. So ever the optimist set out, not even 10 miles in. Thunderstorms, lightning, torrential rain, absolutely delightful. I just like to point out, although I have gotten a little bit softer with age, I'm by no means a fair weather cyclist. I've done my fair share of riding in shit weather. But this summer has been like nothing I've ever known. I'd love to say it's good to be back, but I'd be lying. Get me back to Spain. Unbelievable. <laughs> You've got to laugh. Been a couple of weeks since I uploaded. Last weekend was my birthday. One year older, now 46. My missus bought me tickets to go and see Liam Gallagher down in London. So I had a good three days down there, enjoyed that. Had a few beers, now daft, just enough to get me in the spirits. Good three days. That's me back on the sober streak now until after the gravel world, I reckon, at the earliest. Had pretty much a full week off the bike. Six days to be exact. After three days of eating junk, drinking beer, not riding the bike, just didn't feel in great nick. That ride on Friday was pretty solid, did 100k, even though I didn't feel great. Yesterday I went out with a couple of pals, another 100k in the bag, pretty solid tempo ride. And yeah, today, starting to feel like a cyclist again. Today's ride, I'm heading from Durham down to Barnard Castle. For those who don't live in the UK who don't know, Barnard Castle was famous through COVID times when a British political figure allegedly came here for an eye test. This was at a time when us normal folk, we basically couldn't leave our houses, so yeah. That was all over the press and that was Barnard Castle's five seconds of fame. more like it. Headwind all the way to Barney Castle, strong westerly wind. Came out of Barney, turned right, and now hopefully got a roaring tailwind all the way home. Love the stretch of road when you got conditions like you have today. So what I've 
lot coming up over the next few weeks. Well, next Sunday, so eight days from now, I'm heading to Wales to do the Dragon Ride. I'm doing the Grand Fondo distance. So that's just a whisker over 200k, 3,200 meters of climbing. Looks like an interesting route, so yeah. That should be a good day out on the bike, really looking forward to that one. Then three days after the Dragon Ride, I'm heading to Cuneo, Italy, to do the Fausto Copy Grand Fondo. Now this one is going to be absolutely epic. 170 odd gear, 4,000 meters of climbing. It's going to be a monster day on the bike. And these two events, it'll be a good little test to see where my fitness is at. Two months out from the Hort route. I'll be covering those two events on the channel over the next few weeks so keep your eyes peeled for that as well as an update on my Canyon Air Road new tech reviews, regular training updates as we lead up the Hort route and a few other cool ideas I've got up my sleeve be sure to hit the notification bell and stay up to date with what's going on I've got an absolutely roaring tailwind at the minute gonna enjoy it for a few k then I'll pull over and give you my update on this SRAM Red Axis group set Okay, so since I last spoke to you, the grey clouds rolled in and I decided getting soaked once in a day was enough for anyone. So I got my head down and I'm now pretty much back in Durham. So I've done around about 300, 350 kilometers, give or take, on the new group set. And as you'll know, if you're a regular at the channel, I've got a couple of other bikes with Durius Di2 on. I've been mixing it up, riding the group sets back to back, and it's been a good opportunity to compare and contrast the pros and cons of each. Now the first thing I want to say is, this new group set is a massive step forward and better in every way than the old SRAM Red Axis group set. The hoods are better, the levers are better, the shift performance is better, and the brakes are way more powerful. But as you'll know, I'm a lover of new bike tech and I wanted to test this group set out and see how it compared to the market leader and my personal favourite, Durius Di2. I rode this bike Friday just gone, I was on my Durius bike yesterday, did 100k, back on the Red Axis bike today. Yesterday's ride still fresh in my mind, so let's get into it. Okay, so first up, the one area where I feel this group set does score some points over Durius Di2, and that's the lever and hood design. The new hood profile, and also the rubber they've used on the new hoods, feels great in the hand. The rubber is more tactile, super grippy, and just feels nicer than the Durius Di2 hoods. I also love the profile and contour of the new levers. Just another note on the hoods though, they are still bigger and longer than Durius Di2 hoods. So to compensate for this, I had to fit a cockpit with a slightly shorter stem length. Now, although my position in the hoods, which is where I ride 75, 80% of the time, feels absolutely perfect, but in the drops, my weight feels too far over the front of the bike. And if I'm climbing in the hoods, my knees hit off the handlebars way more than they used to on my other setup. Now I am using the new Rapid cockpit, which has got an aero profile handlebar. So this may not be the case if you're riding a bike with just a standard round bar, but it's definitely something to be aware of. For me though, the new lever and hood design is the only area where this group set trumps Durius Di2. Although the shift is massively improved, it's still not as fast or as precise as a Durius shift. And although the brakes are way more powerful, they do rub a lot more often than my Durius brakes. So I guess what I'm trying to say is for me, Di2 is still the best group set, still my number one choice, and that's what I'm going to be sticking with. Now I'm not sure if you can see behind me, but that rain that's followed me from Barnard Castle has caught me up. 
So I'm going to sign out on this one now, guys. Now, other than that absolute soaking that I got at the start of the ride, the weather gods up until now have been pretty kind and it turned out to be a fantastic ride. There's no doubt the British countryside in summertime with the right conditions is a beautiful place. I hope you've enjoyed this one. If you have, you know what to do. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, like the video, any questions or comments, fire them down below and I'll be sure to get back to you. The rain's starting to come down heavier. I'm going to make the dash for home now. So my name's Dave. This is my channel, Dave Rides Again. I'm nothing special, just a mammal on a mission. I'll catch you next time.